played to game four. I guess that was worth being thrown overboard. Listen, I played the most infamous, hated, and unloved Suikoden game, Suikoden 4, released August 19th, 2004. Now, the Suikoden fleet believes that this game should be thrown overboard to Davy Jones' locker never to be seen again. And apparently, those who played the game share the same fate. Suikoden 4 opens up with Razlo, or Laszlo, and his dignified and courageous best friend, Snow, taking their final exam to become Gaian Knights. It has a bombastic opening with Laszlo and Snow entering a mock ship battle. After succeeding in showing your strength to the commander, our noble crew returns home for the kindling and celebration. Now that you're Knights of Razro, you can take on missions, delivering items and combating pesky pirates. However, something odd happens when encountering a notorious pirate while on duty. He unleashes the power of the cursed true rune. The attack ends his life and the rune transfers to the commander. Fast forward a bit and pirates come to attack Razril, your home. It appears to be losing the battle, but the commander summons the destructive power of the Rune of Punishment. It grants user unimaginable power, but at the cost of its host's life force. The Rune then transfers to those nearby to continue its cycle of death and devastation. And guess who's lucky enough to be next? Although Razril is saved, Laszlo is framed for the murder of Commander Glenn's death and cast away at sea. Meanwhile, the Kuluk Empire, underhandedly being masterminded by the Merchant of Death, Graham Cray, was setting to invade the Southern Isles. So, it was supposed to expand into this grand story of heroically uniting the Southern Isles and taking down the evil Graham Cray. Um, it's not that Suikoden 4 didn't do that, I just wouldn't say it was grand. Or frankly, worth giving a damn. Suikoden 4 had an amazing setup, starting with Ship Wars, your best friend being a certain kind of person, introducing an incredibly interesting and my second favorite, True Rune. It started off really strong, then everything fell apart. From story, several characters that in my opinion should have had a larger role, considering how they were built up, redemption arcs completely cut out, character motives were so vague or poorly explained, and after the midway point, everything felt weightless. Okay, example. You steal a sacred elf mixture. The elf puts you in jail for your own good. You literally talk to the three people in your cell, a 10 second trivial cutscene, and then you're let go. Also, the elf joins you as you leave the island because she's banished from the elven village that you never see or hear about ever again. It was like, oh yeah, we had elves in the past weekend in games. Guess we should uh, show that they're still alive and kicking. Fucking secondly, okay, I gotta pop off about this character. I've been pretty ambiguous about them up until now. This is spoiler territory, so please skip to the number on this coconut if you're not interested. Also, I named this coconut Joey because I'm lonely. Fucking Snow Finger Hut. He is a pussy ass bitch from start to finish. This motherfucker is a captain and abandons his ship because his arm hurts, despite him rowing to a safe vessel and waving it down. Two, he also goes off alone when the enemy is fleeing, trying to play hero, but is saved by teammates. And three, he gets so jelly because Laszlo is the actual courageous one, he lies and tells the Knights of Razril Laszlo killed the commander, just to get rid of him. Not only that, he sells his comrades out, and to nobody's surprise, he isn't welcome back to Razril. After that, he tries the pirate life and fails miserably. Each time he comes back to attack you, you have a chance to off his head. While I didn't, cause you know, 108 stars, true ending and all that, but I'll have you know, I have a safe file right before an encounter where you can decapitate his bitch ass. And let me tell ya, did I revisit it. Snow is as dead to me as the Suikoden series is to Konami. So finally, after the third time, the third chance of having the option to decapitate his head, you can recruit him. What pisses me off, right, is he has no redemption arc. 
he is just a waste of space. I'm not even saying he needed to be Gremio from Suikoden 1, and he certainly lost all ability to be Jowie from Suikoden 2, but at least have a genuine respect for Laszlo. Or maybe a change in attitude, like, I will get better, I will get stronger. No. From the very end to the last cutscene with Snow, he's still a self-deprecating, pity party, woe is me pretty boy. And if it wasn't for his handsome looks, he'd be nothing. Another one. Troy was made out to be the badass of the seas. Troy took out four night shifts with just one Kulub vessel back in the day. So he was roughly a teenager, so you can only imagine what he must be like now. Gaian's veteran knights couldn't land a single scratch on that man. Uh, huh. Troy was built up only for me to be severely let down. Now, let's have a little chat about the gameplay. Honestly. What? Uh, I'm just gonna pass on this. I'm a run. As I was saying, the gameplay is Fighting you. So, Sweet 4 is an incredibly easy game, but it suffers from a really high. Damn it. Oh, come on! I wasn't even moving! Fuck it. Just cut to voiceover and gameplay. Arr, who is she talking to? start with the combat and you'll be experiencing a lot of it thanks to Suikoden 4's exceptionally high encounter rate. Seriously, while you're traveling you'll be hit with 8 encounters within a minute. Sometimes it's just entering an area and before you take your first step you're in an encounter, at the very least you'll never be under leveled. There are three types of combat. Standard turn based, your usual options of attack, defend, rune magic items, retreat, or if you're high enough level, release, which is a guaranteed leave of battle. I'm gonna take this moment to talk about my second favorite true rune, the Rune of Punishment. You deal heavy damage at the cost of some HP, and I love it. A tragic backstory of a tragic rune with tragic mechanics. I am all about it. Combos are slightly different. In previous Suikoden's, if you have people who were allied or had some kind of history in your party, they could do a combo attack. An attack that took their turns but unleashed a single powerful move, or a multi-targeted move. In Suikoden 4, you have to learn and earn combo moves. It doesn't just come automatically. And the longer you have a combo team in your party, the stronger the combo move becomes. However, the biggest difference in standard combat from previous Suikoden's is the reduced party of four people instead of the usual six. All right, so here's the thing. It's not as bad as people make it sound. The battling is still solid. You can build a party just fine, but it does raise the question of why give us 108 characters, 60 plus of them being playable, and you downsize our party? I don't follow. Now, I wouldn't have minded this change so much if they expanded the ship parties. In Suikoden 4, you'll be traveling via ship for a while, and you'll have the option of forming two ship parties that you could switch between, but only while you're on the ship. If you were able to do that outside of the ship, then pff, hot damn, yes, four-person party, no problem. So that about covers the standard battles. Now we could talk about one of my favorite army battles of Suikoden, probably my second only to Suikoden 1, ship battles. A radical, albeit easy game of sink my battleship. Set up your ship to people with strong rune abilities and fighters. The goal is to get the ship's HP to zero. You fire rune cannons, and you want to position yourself in ways that the enemy can't fire back. Or make sure you have the rune with a superior element equipped. An example is a water rune can break through a fire rune. Or if both ships fire with the same element, it's a wash. But the easiest way is to board an enemy ship and take them out. And lastly, the duels. And man oh man, are they without a doubt the easiest, least stressful thing ever. Back in the day, duels were supposed to be one of the heights of battles. It's pure thrill and nerves, and those feelings are not present within Suikoden 4. Yes, it plays the same as previous entries where your opponent would say a line hinting to what they were going to do next. Attack, defend, or a special attack. It works like a game of rock, paper, scissors, attack versus defend, take less damage, attack versus attack, both take damage, attack versus special, one person takes more damage, and guard versus special, the player takes no damage and counters with a special maneuver. 
And they added a full power and half power mechanic, which <laughs> I was full power the entire time. Go hard or go home, people. The problem with this is the piece of dialogue offered was so easy to decipher their next move. They might as well have told you exactly what they're doing. It's so suspiciously obvious that you think they're gonna do something else to fool you, so you end up believing that. Then you choose a poor decision based on your own confusion. So prepare yourself. Let's see you make a move. Outside of battle, you'll be sailing. Lots of sailing until you gain access to fast travel. You'll sail all over the southern seas in search of 108 stars of destiny. People who will aid you in your cause, whether it be a party member, a shopkeeper, or both, all have various requirements in order for them to join you. I highly recommend using a guide because I sure did. The general rule of thumb is if they have a portrait, they're recruitable. Generally. Collect all 108 stars to unlock the true ending. Now, one of my biggest issues with Suikoden has always been your castle, or in this case, your ship, where the stars linger and you get your prep work done. In the previous games, your shops, inns, minigames were scattered on different floors, making prepping a nightmare. But Suikoden 4 has the best quote unquote castle. The shops you interact with the most are nearby, equipment, tempering your weapon, runes, cooking, all that conveniently there. Now, a few minor nitpicks is you cannot temper or equip runes to your ship parties, even while you're on your ship. They must be in your active party to mess with their equipment. I'm also at the point where I need the main protagonist to not be silent. Suikoden 4 is the first of its kind to include full-on voice acting, baby. And just certain hype moments were kind of pulled back. Suikoden 4 has full-fledged people now. They don't have that confused, chibi art style. They look like adults, teens, kids, or elderly. Faces are still painted on, but it looks like a lot more effort was put into it. And I'm not gonna lie, the main character's face freaks me out. He's supposed to be this brave, forgiving person, but look at his big, blue, soulless eyes. I feel like he's constantly looking for a fight with that mug. So the characters and NPCs are the least offensive. It's the environment that kills me. It's just a lot of blue. And I get it, we're on islands. What else is there to look at but water? However, it looks like they just slapped on some murky looking water on half the screen and a light blue with some clouds on the top and done. The ocean harbors about 50 to 80% of all life on this earth and somehow this game made it look dead. All right, another rant incoming is I couldn't help but think of Wind Waker while playing Suikoden 4. Cause Wind Waker did everything right with sailing. I get you're on a small ship versus a pirate ship, but it felt like the ocean was animated. Wind Waker, I felt like I was moving at an acceptable pace. You could see the wind streaks swirling in the sky. Birds, mini tornadoes, daytimes changed, optional ship battles, there were several items that begged to be explored in the distance, there was treasure to collect, mini games, or sometimes you'd run into a crazy foe. In Suikoden 4, there was little to none of that. Speeding up the boat felt minimal. Occasionally, yes, you'd run into a hard foe, but it wasn't executed any differently. And there were not a lot of islands to explore. Speaking of, mapping was shit. Wind Waker gave me this wonderful section map and Suikoden 4 was just literally where your boat traveled. And frankly, the map was way too big. You sail way too damn slow. The encounter rate is ridiculously high to justify sailing these long and uneventful seas. Now look at Wind Waker. There's literally something to do in every section of the map. Here we have Suikoden 4's map and it's way too big for how slow you sail. If they could have condensed it, I would have been a lot more forgiving. And traveling long distances must be made visually appealing. And if not, at least allow us to get around faster. I know I'm comparing two different genres and Zelda's kind of random, but I cannot help but to think of Wind Waker who did it better. Finally, the artwork looks fantastic. Fun fact, Junko Kawano is back. She did the artwork for Suikoden 1 and 2, but she was the producer and writer for Suikoden Tactics, which is a game that expands upon Suikoden 4, and I hear is much better, so there's that. And lastly, the music, probably my favorite thus far. 
Suikoden 4 did a great job of keeping the nautical theme throughout its soundtrack. I'm kind of grateful it moved away from the folk music, not entirely, but enough to please me. Like most JRPGs, it has multiple battle themes on land versus sea. Even the sailing themes change. Each island has its own music, which really expresses what that island is about. Also familiar tracks within the Suikoden series make a comeback. I think to wrap things up, my favorite track is Imminent Threat. It's what you hear before shit goes down, the prep work, the concern, the worry, the not really calm, but the calm before the storm. Suikoden 4 is rough. Despite the slow sailing and exploration, the insane encounter rate, bland story, and atrocious characters, I kind of liked it. 6 out of 10? It's incredible. This game manages to have themes that I love. A nautical motif, shoddy characters, exploration, but it manages to half-ass or even fail on every single front. And what kills me is this game has so much potential. It starts off really strong and then crumbles midway. Anyways, this ends my Suikoden saga until Konami brings Suikoden 5 to PSN. It's really sad that this has to end on such a lackluster note. Right, Jowie? Jowie agrees. Thank you so much for watching. I don't have time to put annotations up, but if you like this video, please, please, please let me know. Leave a comment, leave a like. Please share this video around. I worked so hard on it. Too hard for such an average game, honestly. <laughs> but thank you for watching. And of course, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It helps out the channel immensely. Appreciate your faces. Mwah. Oh shit. There are other castaways here. Thrown overboard for liking so we get in for? Yep. I see you got a coconut, buddy. Sure do. His name's Snow. You cute, Nanny. <laughs>